to that time. Um, Turn them off. Can everybody hear me? You can now. Go. Great. So uh, I'm thrilled to call this meeting to order. Uh, I believe the agenda has been circulated to everybody. They're not streaming. They're not streaming. Well. Commissioner, Hold on can, one second. can you wait one moment? Um, John, can you call OGS and have them start streaming again? No, it's going to give us about 15 seconds. Thank you. And I, I think they will pick up from where he started anyway, because we're on a delay. So did the whole world miss my singing? I thought that was really the best part of it. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, we're good. Okay. Uh, once again, good morning, everybody. I'm thrilled to join. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be there in person and look forward to, to the time when we all see each other uh, probably upcoming uh, soon. I believe the agenda has been circulated to everybody. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Great. So we will uh, we'll start with my often forgotten but newly uh, invigorated motion to adopt the meetings from our September meeting. Do I hear a Don't motion move. about the meeting? The minutes. Don't move. Do I hear a second? Uh, is there any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any dissenters? Terrific. That motion carries. Um, today, my job is really a very high level uh, synopsis of all the activity, and there's been quite a lot of activity over the last month. Uh, as everybody in the room knows, uh, the staff has been working incredibly diligently um, and thoughtfully, and it bears always saying in a remarkable bipartisan manner to move us forward to where we are today, in particular to get our statutorily obligated regulations off the ground and ready to be not just widely circulated, but circulated for public comment. Um, we mentioned this briefly last meeting, but there were, there were a few items that required particular attention. I won't go into them in depth because our, our um, Executive, uh, our executive unit will give a more precise update. But uh, of the four major items um, in a sea of in a sea of important things that were being constructed, the four major items that required particular attention was a conversation about whether there should be a process for informal complaints and specifically for anonymous informal complaints for the Public Campaign Finance Board. Um, we had some real conversation about. Whether, when a hearing officer makes a determination, whether the commissioners or some other body within the PCFD should have the ability to modify or determine or change the determination, i.e. should there be an internal appeals pro process. Um, we had very thoughtful conversation about um, the fine structure and in particular whether or not the statute required fines to be uncapped or capped based on a percentage of the total uh, dollars raised by a campaign. Our goal in that conversation was to make sure that the public fisc was appropriately protected while balancing with our long stated goals that this uh, campaign pro this campaign finance board be one that is um, that frankly that new and old hands can use well without being excessively punitive or gotcha and that we don't cripple or punish campaigns that make um, uh, mistakes that are not motivated by uh, bad will. And the fourth, of course, was um, related to that of whether there should be a four day window to cure discrepancies when mistakes are made and whether or not there should be a threshold for those discrepancies. What size of reporting mistakes um, would lead to the four day cure? Um, I won't get into great detail about that. What I will say is that all those conversations required um, thoughtful across the aisle um, conversation and negotiation, sometimes by Vice Chair Kolb and I, who continue, I think, to have a very productive relationship, or at least so long as I can mute him, that's what we're going to say. Um, and, and more importantly, by the staff who have been uh, terrific and diligent. I think those are the high level things. Um, those are the high level conversations that have been 
going on and we're pleased to say that they've mostly met resolution and now we're excited to continue to refine and get public comments on on the uh, regulations that are being proposed. Um, I think with that very high level landscaping, let me turn it over uh, to our co-executive director uh, because uh, our democratic director, Cheryl Kausers, um, had the chair the last couple times. Uh, we want to continue the bipartisan spirit and we're very happy to have uh, our co-director, William McCann, Bill McCann, lead the conversation next month. Um, so unless there are questions for me, I'd, I'd like to turn it over to Bill McCann. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I have two ends of the room with commissioners, so I'll just kind of look down the middle and uh, don't want anyone to think I'm being rude. But in any event, uh, Cheryl and I, uh, much as we've done in the previous meetings, will break up our report and uh, I'm going to handle uh, uh, project management, uh, our comparative research, and our work with the uh, Office of the State Comptroller, and then she'll handle another uh, a number of other aspects as well. Uh, so on uh, program management, which is critical uh, to our functioning, we're working on multiple tracks concurrently. Uh, as you know, we've engaged Nice Tech uh, to work with us to, to develop the program, and so we have a weekly uh, series of executive meetings with them to discuss program plans for the week as uh, as well as any outstanding issues. And towards that, we've been working on a staff level with NICE Tech on high level business processes and workflows for the ultimate uh, uh, software and procurement processes that we'll be undertaking shortly. Uh, towards that end, we had an initial meeting with OGS this past Friday to discuss the RFI, uh, which is a request for information and RFP processes to look what our options might be as we move towards procurements of our system needs. And we'll have a regular uh, follow-up with OGS as we work towards that. Uh, we're working on a very granular uh, level for our business rules for the procedure that will be necessary for uh, developing the RFP. And we're having a weekly cadence of meetings essentially every other day to work on the variety of business rules that will be necessary for those RFP specifications. And so we're working to complete that this quarter. Uh, towards that end also, we have been working to uh, onboard a, a, a project manager through NICE Tech. We have a temporary project manager uh, through Tim Schmel, who uh, will be ultimately overseeing at a high level all the IT projects uh, at the SBOE that NICE Tech is engaged with. We have onboarded our business analyst, uh, Naba Pradani, who's uh, really great. And we have been interviewing and uh, we're currently going through uh, reference checks for a PM candidate. Nice Tech is doing an administrative review and we hope to have that process uh, wrapped up very shortly. Uh, we've talked at uh, length in the past about our statement of work. Uh, we've been working with ITU and uh, the co-execs to finalize that. Uh, that statement of work has been shared with the co-execs and IT for uh, final comments and edits. Uh, directly related to that, I know the commissioners have expressed a, a high interest in a, uh, having a, a timeline with milestones for program implementation so that uh, the commissioners will be able to see that the program is on track. Uh, we do have a, a high level timeline with milestones for the program that's part of the statement of work. Uh, and once uh, working with NICE Tech as the PM or the project manager is onboarded, uh, we were preparing a more detailed and granular timeline with milestones that's similar to the one the board did for the OVR AVR project. So we're going to provide uh, the commissioners with a copy of that as soon as it's completed. But in the interim, we will share the high level timeline from the statement of work as a standalone for ease of reference. So we'll send that out today after the meeting. Uh, we do have uh, bi-weekly meetings between uh, the co-director, Cheryl, myself, and, and Todd and Kristen, where we update on uh, project issues and progress and to coordinate uh, regarding uh, related items such as budget, staffing, space planning, and the like. And Cheryl will be addressing those issues specifically in her segment of the uh, update. On the uh, comparative research front, this is a very critical undertaking that we're doing relative to seeing what's available out there from other jurisdictions who have already implemented uh, public campaign finance programs. Uh, 
Towards that end, uh, and we've been working with those other jurisdictions as well as good government groups, uh, we will be meeting with the New York City Campaign Finance Board again on Thursday the 14th to go through their systems. And this meeting will be specifically geared towards uh, uh, NYSTEC and ITU working with uh, the New York City Campaign Finance Board to run through their programs and their, and their system. And so uh, that'll go far to uh, our analysis of uh, what future steps should be. Uh, staff is conducting uh, a comparative analysis uh, with six other uh, public campaign finance jurisdictions, including uh, Massachusetts, Maryland, New Jersey, Minnesota, Florida, and Michigan, and we'll be conducting outreach with those to uh, set up demos. Uh, we've been working uh, with the Brennan Center, which has been uh, extremely helpful. They've uh, provided feedback on our regulations, uh, made introductions with experts who implemented public financing in other jurisdictions such as Maryland and Connecticut. So, uh, we appreciate uh, their assistance in that regard. Uh, we previously mentioned that uh, uh, working with uh, the Office of the State Comptroller, the, the payment process ultimately will be a critical aspect of the program. Uh, we've had uh, several uh, high-level meetings with uh, the Comptroller's Office to discuss, uh, in essence, two tracks. Uh, the first is for the audit process, which would be prepayment and then post-election. And uh, OSC is reviewing currently their needs to see if our audit and payment process would suffice uh, for their payment process requirements because of the short time frame which monies have to be uh, uh, put into uh, campaign accounts. We want to make sure that we have uh, an integrated system so that basically what we do as part of our review should suffice for when they have to authorize the payment. Uh, so, uh, and then ultimately the payment mechanism on how the money will actually get into the accounts. Those are the two tracks that we're focusing on. Uh, so, uh, and this, by the way, as we previously mentioned, will result in another regulation that will be uh, coming down the pipe. So, uh, our next meeting will be with uh, teams from OSC and the Public Campaign Finance Board to discuss these two tracks uh, at a more granular level, and that'll be on Friday, October the 15th. In the interim, uh, the Comptroller's Office and our staff are working to uh, look at those business requirements so that we can kind of meld them ultimately for the process in our system. Uh, so uh, that is uh, my update, and I will turn it over to Cheryl to cover the rest of our report. Thank you. As is mentioned um, by the Chair and Bill, we are we're continuing to work on regulations for the Public Campaign Finance Board. Um, to date, we have uh, posted regulation, program regulations, and the comment period is set to close on October 14th. So if you'd like to comment, please, please they're posted on the website and in the state registrar. You can read the regulation and please comment to us. Um, likewise, we, we posted and we initiated the SAFA process, which is the State Administrative Procedure Act, on the debate regulations. That comment period is set to close around November 18th. Um, we, we are working with the Office of the State Comptroller. The work on the payment process will result in a, another regulation that will be in our future. So we will draft that with the Office of the State Comptroller and make sure our audit and payment process uh, syncs with theirs. Um, and then on new business today, we will take up the enforcement regulation, and at that point, our council will provide an overview of that regulation. Um, administratively, uh, in terms of staffing, uh, we'll go through this each month at each report, but we have two or three commissioners appointed. Um, on September 15th, we had 16 lines classified through the Civil Service Commission. They were four trainers, four enforcement attorneys, four administrative assistants, and four ITU positions. Um, job postings went up immediately for the trainers, administrative assistants, and again for the auditors that had already been classified. Um, interviews are ongoing throughout the month of October. Um, in terms of staffing, the last report, we were talking about the onboarding process. Um, to date, um, five of the 16 Positions are, are on payroll and fully approved. That's our May appointees and one from July. Um, so it's moving forward. Um, I know our co-executive directors are meeting now bi-weekly with the Division of Budget. Um, 
and, and have made progress on, on that front. Um, we are working to classify additional positions that we'll need in the future, such as compliance liaisons, investigators, and our debate PIO staff. So we're finalizing those job descriptions and we'll submit those for an, an upcoming Civil Service Commission meeting. Uh, an update on space planning. Uh, the space planning has succeeded nicely. This, the PCFB will have 64 seats in this building um, and it will be renovated and we will be at 40 North Pearl Street. Um, as far as equipment, uh, we're working with our we work with our IT department to, to uh, finalize and put together an equipment package for procurement to for all existing staff, backfilling staff, and all new employees. Um, right now, due to the pandemic, there's shortages um, on a lot of items, so we wanted to make sure we had that in early, so that way um, we plan for the onboarding of staff. And then lastly, Bill and I have been working on our proposed budget for the the 22-23 state fiscal year, and we're also planning um, that budget to go in the out years, um, so we have a better look of what resources the board would need. Uh, we will be providing a draft uh, when it's complete for, for the commissioners to review, and we're planning to have that submission go to the co-executive directors for their state board of elections budget submission. I believe that's all we have for unit report. Are there any questions? Yeah, I was just thinking, I was unmuting. I just wanted to invite questions to our executive unit. Yeah, I have a question. Can I take this off? Of course. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, Bill, you mentioned that document that you guys are going to be working on, which will provide us with a timeline. Yeah. The task. So I think that's a particularly important document that we need to get together as quickly as possible because I think that would give all of us, the commissioners and the staff, a better idea of whether we're on track going forward with this thing. So I would encourage you to get that done as quickly as possible because I really think without that, we don't really have a sense of where we are in a you know, time frame to get this thing done by really the end of next year, which I think is our goal. Uh, I guess my question was, in, in, in the hiring component, uh, is there a timeline for hiring? You know, you mentioned you're trying to create all these staff positions for civil service. I wondered if you had, if you guys had some sort of timeline for which positions need to be hired first, time frames for when you're trying to fill certain positions uh, within the event. Well, we do. Uh, we have talked about it in depth. Um, and one of the reasons we're classifying the positions now so that work is, is done and that when we need the positions, because we know this work has to be done, we have those classified. Um, so we're not. You know, Cheryl, I think you're. I think that's a good idea. I think you should get them created as, mm -hmm. as soon as possible. My question really is, though, what's your time frame for filling them? So you create them in October, let's say, of 2021. Is your intention to fill them all as soon as possible? Is your intention to fill them you know, on a rolling basis? Because right now I need these people, but I don't need these. Like the, okay. you mentioned, the debate. You're, you're going to have debate coordinators or something. Well, the debates aren't going to occur till 2026. Correct. I think is what we're anticipating. Correct. I'm guessing we aren't going to hire a debate coordinator next month. That, that, that is seem correct. To make sense so, to me. So I'm just trying to understand if you guys have a, you know, time like a list of of, of jobs you want to fill and a time frame with, with, within which you want to fill them. We do. So, um, and and thankfully to to council's office before we were appointed, they started on the, on the staffing process. And when we were onboarded, we had a meeting uh, with the co-executive directors. Um, then it was Bob Brem um, on an approved staffing plan. And so we have classified some positions. And you're right, we do not need debate PIO now. We need those for 2026. Um, but we had highlighted um, some of the auditor positions should be filled now. We would like some of the training positions to be filled now because we envision uh, working within the resources we have here at the state board. Uh, we have a wonderful training unit and they will take the lead in all of the training and we will hire um, some new trainers to learn not only campaign finance and help them, but be prepared to train public campaign finance when we need that when uh, the program is implemented. Likewise, we classified the four ITU positions. That was a high priority. We need 
dedicated ITU staff to be here to help us on our business processes. So for all the positions that have been created, um, in the future are those that we're looking to classify now, the liaisons, the investigators, the PIO. I guess what I'm really asking for is if you have that in a document, that'd be helpful. Okay. I'd like to see it. I just would be curious to see what that looks like. I don't necessarily want to make you go through everything. Oh, right we can here, do it with the, the if you have some sort of a you know collection that gives those estimated time frames okay. for those that would just be a helpful piece of information for me. And you know, in conjunction with what you're doing on the tasks, sure. that other piece where you're trying to put together a timeline for the We'll task. include that with it because yeah, it those go together. Hand. In my mind, those two would go together. If we have a task that needs to be done by this particular type of uh, person, then we need to get that person here to comply with the time frame on the task. So I think they go together. I just think it'd be helpful to have that. Okay, absolutely. That's how part of my process. No, we could definitely do that, Commissioner. And I would just add that there's a couple of dynamics that we're working with. One, there is there has been some significant delay in the onboarding of folks through the division of budget process, so we, we're cognizant of that. But I would say as we stand here today, we have a we have a good core of people initially because we're working through the business processes. There'll be this uh, interim phase where we develop the program, literally. Uh, uh, but the, the dynamic is uh, basic campaign finance will be the foundation of the program. And so while we won't necessarily, for instance, need auditors until the money hits the street or the prepayment reviews are done in the spring of 2024, uh, you know, maybe or potentially it could be in 2023, but uh, all the folks that have to do those aspects of the job will need to learn uh, the fundamentals of campaign finance to understand what they have to do for the public campaign finance board. So our, uh, in addition uh, to you know, flushing out, as you requested, this you know the, the literal time frame when we anticipate the people be on board, and we're going to build into that or have conceptually built into that the need for making sure that the people are on board it actually prior to that, so we have a chance to uh, train them, and have them shadow the people that are in compliance. Now, one of the reasons why the state board received the program, as you know, because we have a, a great staff through compliance who have a lot of experience in campaign finance. So we want to be able to give the auditors and the you know, different uh, facets of the program an opportunity to kind of get their feet wet so that when the program needs to run, uh, they're not starting from scratch. They have a foundation upon which to do their work. So we're going to, we have to balance those things. But uh, to your point though, we can definitely provide you with that work. And, and we do have to plan for time. So if we need someone for a specific month or quarter, we have to plan that up front, I think four to six months ahead of time. Ideally, we would have uh, an offer out to the candidate, and hopefully they, they remain patient while they're approved and onboarded. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions from the commissioners? Proceed to uh, yeah. old business center. Exactly. If there are no other questions, I believe we proceed to old business. I take it this will be quite quick. Um, it is my understanding we do not have any old business. Is there anybody who is there anybody who uh, understands differently? Hearing hearing no uh, objection, <laughs> let's move on to new business. Uh, the new business has been extensively foreshadowed. We are now at the point where we have our regulations, uh, our regulations to ju not just be circulated, but also to meet our statutory obligation um, to begin the comment period. Do I have a resolution to promulgate these uh, the draft resolutions? Excuse me, do I have a motion? Forgive my misgiving. Do I have a motion? I, 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 I move that we adopt the uh, resolution. Do I have a second? Second. second. Have you defeated those tongue twisters? Do I hear it? How many eyes? Aye. 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 Are there any nays? And just so we understand, this is adopting it merely to put out for comment. 
Exactly. Correct. Right. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're directing us to post it with the Department of State. Because okay. uh, I had a couple yeah. issues I will tell you I mentioned earlier with staff just so they know nothing will hold it up. But I'm right. expecting there'll be another version of this to actually approve <laughs> finally. Right. Uh, we're going to receive public comment. Yeah. We've already okay. received a couple. And okay. We'll review that and revise it accordingly. Okay. Uh, with that in, uh, reinforcing clarification, I believe, oh, let me ask again, are there any nays? Hearing no nays, the resolution is adopted. Our regulations will be, will meet their statutory obligation to be posted for public comment. It is, lastly, it's currently my understanding that uh, there's- Chairman? Yes, please. I'd like to say something. Please. I'd like to bring something up. Please. Um, those of those who commissioners that were there at the hearing the other day, you heard what I said about uh, making it easier for the public to get the information they, they need to, to vote. Uh, and I, I'm bringing it up here because I'd like the other three uh, commissioners, to, either two commissioners, to hear this also at the same time. I'm not asking for anything to be done at this particular point, but my, my comment dealt with the situation where we have loads of information on our websites and in this office that isn't easily accept, uh, accessible to the general public, to general voters. Um, and what I'd like to do is at some future meeting, make a 15, 20 minute presentation on the idea, and it's, it's a simple idea. You bring down an app to your phone, you hit your app, you put your address in, all the candidates from dog catcher to governor come up or president, and then you have the ability to research those based on the candidate's own information. And this is all stuff, by the way, that we have on our website right now. We get the, uh, we get the websites, they can be on, but it, what, it, what it does is it makes it simpler for people to understand where they have to vote, uh, what the regs are in terms of dates and times, and who the candidates are they're voting for and what they're saying, period, in their own words, so that we're not uh, putting any overlays on it in terms of uh, newspaper articles or anything else that we're adding to the situation. Uh, so I just want to bring it up, tell you I would like to make that presentation at some meeting. I will, uh, I don't know when I'd be ready, but it would be short, it wouldn't be long, and uh, I would like you to hear it. I look. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I certainly welcome the presentation. You will let us know when it, you're prepared to make it. And I think what I can say very generally is anything that helps voters make a more informed decision um, is certainly something I would strongly support. And, uh, you know, we have to get it right, but the ethos is one I'm entirely supportive of. So I certainly welcome and we'll just figure out the timing of that. Yeah, well, one of the reasons I brought it up here is that you're also going to be building a website or incorporating a website for your purposes. And if any of these ideas are useful, there may be avenues that we would pursue together here. Thank you. I'm entirely in support. Uh, let me take a moment to ask if there are any other comments especially in this vein, anything that may not be directly on point, but uh, others feel, other commissioners feel is important. If not, it is also my understanding that we, that the, the public campaign finance board does not need an executive session today. Is that correct? Correct. correct. With that, I think my um, digital presence or at least my digital uh, on stage is uh, concluded. Thank you very much. Um, do I hear a motion to close this portion of the campaign finance, the campaign finance board portion of the general meeting? So moved. Oh, second. We need to confirm our next meeting. Oh yes, I always, oh, I've gotten better at the minutes and always forget this part. <laughs> Let me pull up my calendar. Are there suggestions on when we should next? I thought meet? we already did. I thought, I thought we, we already did. We already did. did. Yeah, no. December fourteenth. Put it on the record. Right. Right. December fourteenth is scheduled for December fourteenth at noon. Right. December fourteenth. Right. 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 The next meeting. That's right. Okay. Great. It's on my calendar as well. Great. Yeah, we've already done that. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, it's just merely to refresh everyone's recollection.
There we go. We have both refreshed our recollection and stated it for the public record. <laughs> With that complete, do I hear a motion to adjourn the Public Campaign Finance Board? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody wish to continue hearing my dulcet tones? <laughs> the motion, the motion carries. <laughs>